Hey, Iostacks here, number one private Overwatch coach over on iostacks.com and former head coach for organizations such as NYXL and the Boston Uprising. Today, I'd like to go through all the relevant settings that you should adjust in and out of game to ensure that you have the most optimized experience for competitive play. I want this video to be as brief as possible, so I'll just mention the setting, show you where to find it and what to set it to. Out of game. Let's start with everything you should set outside of the game. Power plan. Open your Windows search, type in edit power plan and select the high performance power plan. This disables some energy saving features such as core parking or CPU throttling, which can help with stutters and low frame rates. Graphics driver settings. Open your graphics drivers and make sure that the power option there is set to the highest performance available. Here you can see what it looks like for Nvidia GPUs. Internet connection. Do not play competitive games with a wireless connection. On top of adding unnecessary latency, wireless connections are by design unstable and rely on error correction to work. This means that you'll experience something called packet loss, leading to the game not registering your shots and putting you at a huge disadvantage. Always connect your PC directly via Ethernet to your router. Betternet. Head into your Battle.net settings and set it to close itself once Overwatch 2 is launched. This way, Battle.net won't keep running in the background and you can save on system resources. Now let's get into the in-game settings. First, under Video, Display Mode. Set this to Full Screen. This way, the graphics card can draw frames directly to your display rather than having to go through the Windows Desktop Window Manager, or DWM for short. This means that minimizing the game is slower, but the reduction in input latency and increase to responsiveness is absolutely vital when it comes to playing the game competitively. Video Dynamic Render Scale Set this to OFF. This setting changes the render resolution in real time, lowering it during very intense scenes and raising it during less intense scenes. We want our game to run at a consistent render scale to improve input latency. Turning this setting off is highly recommended. If your FPS lowers, you can manually reduce your render scale. Video Render Scale Set this to custom and the in-game resolution to 100%. If you are struggling with low FPS, even after following all of the steps in this guide, you can lower this to 75% or 50% to improve performance. Although keep in mind that this will have a significant impact on visual fidelity. I personally would never go below 75% render scale on a 1080p screen. Video Frame Rate Set this to custom and cap it to the refresh rate of your monitor. Make sure that your video resolution is set to its highest resolution and refresh rate. The number in the brackets is your refresh rate, the dimensions in front of that your resolution. Alternatively, you can also set the frame rate cap to 600. This does lower input lag slightly, but can introduce visual tearing and frame time inconsistencies. Display VSync, triple buffering, reduce buffering. Turn these to off, off, and on. This prevents the game from unnecessarily buffering frames before sending them to your monitor, making sure that you can see the frames your GPU renders as soon as possible, reducing perceived latency, and making the game more responsive. Display NVIDIA Reflex. If you have an NVIDIA GPU, turn this to Enabled if you have a GTX 10 series card or play on a laptop, and to Enabled plus Boost if you have a GTX 20 or 30 series card. This is similar to the Reduce Buffering option mentioned previously. The difference between Enabled and Enabled plus Boost is that Boost prevents the GPU from downclocking. Graphics Quality, Texture Quality. Set this to high. This has no significant impact on performance and improves visuals. Graphics quality, texture, filtering quality. Same as the above, set this to 16x. On modern GPUs, this has no measurable performance impact and improves visuals a lot. Graphics quality, local fog detail. Turn this to low. This setting impacts performance quite a lot and can be visually distracting for most players. Graphics quality, dynamic reflections. Turn this off. 
Dynamic reflections are the most FPS intensive setting in the game and enabling them will completely tank your frame rate. Graphics quality, shadow detail. I don't recommend turning shadows off. It can make targets stick out less and make depth perception difficult. Set this to at least low, although any higher than that gives no competitive advantage. Graphics quality, model detail. It is recommended to set this to low for the best performance. That said, model detail is very noticeable, especially on your character's view model in-game, and the performance impact isn't significant. If you have performance to spare, this is one of the first settings you can increase a bit if you want to, uh, the game to look better. Graphics quality, effects detail. This affects how dense particle effects and ability effects in the game are. Generally speaking, you want to avoid as much visual noise as possible, so set this to its lowest setting. Graphics quality, lighting quality. This is just eye candy, and it hogs quite a bit of performance. Set this to its lowest value. Graphics quality, anti-alias quality. This does not impact performance that much on its lower settings, but the visual difference simply isn't particularly noticeable during day-to-day -day gameplay. Unless you want to just stare at the scenery all day, leave this off. If you use it, use one of the SMAA settings. FXAA just blurs the entire image. Graphics quality, refraction quality. This is responsible for all the distortion effects you can see around explosions, for example. This does not have a particularly high performance impact, but introduces additional visual noise, so I recommend turning it to its lowest setting. Graphics quality, ambient occlusion. This adds shadows into small corners and crevices, and makes objects feel more like they're a part of the map geometry. This does have an impact on performance, although not a particularly large one, and it does improve visuals quite significantly. If you have the performance to spare, I recommend leaving this on. Graphics quality, local reflections. This is just eye candy. Turn it off for less visual noise. Graphics quality, damage effects. I recommend setting this to low. Keep in mind that in combination with the other settings, this does make abilities quite a bit harder to see. With experience, however, you won't be running into any sojourn ease anymore, and being able to clearly see your target during a chaotic teamfight is crucial. Sound, spatial audio. I recommend enabling Dolby Atmos for headphones. Overwatch's implementation of this virtual surround sound tech is really good, better than almost every headset included setting I have seen. If your headset supports surround sound, I recommend disabling it and instead relying on the in-game spatial audio. Sound, audio mix. Set this to headphones. This gives you the best stereo imaging and allows you to locate people based on their footsteps easier when used in conjunction with Dolby Atmos. Sound, play sound when X is eliminated. Turn this on. Being able to track the kill feed is a crucial skill and having to look into the top right corner constantly in Overwatch 1 was very taxing on your cognitive resources. Having short sounds play whenever someone gets eliminated or our team gets a kill is incredibly helpful. I haven't felt the need to look at the kill feed at all once I got used to the setting and I highly recommend you use it too. For reference, the sound when one of your teammates dies gets progressively lower in pitch the more people die and the sound that plays when an enemy dies gets progressively higher in pitch. So it's very very easy to tell, just based on the pitch of the sound, how many enemies have died and how many teammates you've lost. Controls, sensitivity. You want your effective DPI, or eDPI for short, to be somewhere between 2000 and 10,000. The recommended range for aim heavy characters is 3200 to 6400. To calculate your eDPI, simply multiply your DPI, which you can find in your mouse's software, for example Razer Synapse or Logitech G Hub, with your in game sensitivity. So 800 DPI and 5 sensitivity in game equals 4000 eDPI. You need this setting to be consistent across all characters. Do not customize your sensitivity on a character by character basis to keep your aim consistent, although I could make a whole video about that topic. Controls, show friendly outlines, show allied health bars. Keep these settings on default, 
you don't want friendly outlines to always show because it can get quite confusing during fights. Controls, crouch. I highly recommend you bind crouch to either C or a left alt. If your keyboard is rotated clockwise, bind it to C and rest your thumb on C. If your keyboard is rotated counterclockwise, bind it to left alt and rest your thumb on left alt. This prevents you from habitually jumping and improves your movement and accuracy overall. Gameplay enable high precision mouse input. Turn this on. This improves support for high polling rate peripherals even when the game runs at lower frame rates and improves responsiveness and accuracy. Gameplay HUD. Always skip kill cam. Turn this setting on. While watching an enemy's kill cam can give you information about their ult charge, it's much better to be able to track the ongoing fight while you are respawning, which allows you to formulate a plan of attack once you start walking back towards your team. The kill cam itself doesn't have as much useful information by comparison. Gameplay HUD Display System Clock Make sure this setting is turned off. If it's on, you might realize that it's 4am and you were supposed to pick up your daughter from kindergarten 15 hours ago. The grind comes first. Accessibility, camera shake, HUD shake. Turn these both to reduced or off. They are visually distracting and, while immersive, only handicap us from a competitive standpoint. Accessibility, color blindness. By default, the enemy team's outlines are much darker than the outlines of our team. Changing the enemy team's color to something a bit more vibrant, like pink, can help you differentiate between ally and enemy in the middle of a teamfight. And lastly, character-specific settings. This is something I didn't want to cover in as much depth. The most important ones are relative scope sensitivity which you want to set to 38 for Widowmaker and Ana, and 51.5 for Ash. This gives you a 1 to 1 ratio for normal sized flicks between scoping and not scoping. With larger flicks it does not match up anymore, but because of geometry it is impossible to have a true 1 to 1 ratio. Abilities that have sensitivities, such as Kiriko's Swift Step, Ana's Nano Boost or Zarya's Bubbles, you want to set based on how the ability is used. Kiriko's swift step should be set to 100% sensitivity, because speed is more important than accuracy. For abilities such as nano boost or projected barrier, you want to set it a bit lower so you can bubble the correct person. That said, with Overwatch 2 being 5v5, the chances of accidentally hitting the wrong person with your abilities is much lower, so I recommend higher ability sensitivity values than you used in Overwatch 1. For recoil compensation on characters like Ash or Cassidy, I highly recommend turning it off. This way you maintain control of your crosshair at all times, rather than the game temporarily disabling vertical mouse inputs during the recoil animation to prevent you from compensating. Just leave it off. And that's it! I hope this guide could help you optimize your settings for Overwatch 2. If you enjoyed this guide and want to learn more about Overwatch 2, subscribe to this channel and leave a like or comment. If you're interested in improving even faster, check out my coaching services on iostex.com. I even offer aim coaching, which includes a full settings checkup. You can also head over to my Discord server to ask me questions in my hashtag AskStuxAnything channel. My name is Iostex and I'd like to thank you for learning.